What's up, everybody? Welcome in. This is the calm before the storm. It is FST. My name's Matt. His name is Joe. Joe Pizapia, as a matter of fact. And this is time for week two. We have a lot of season-long managers. Maybe you're 0-1 and you're panicking. Don't. Joe's here for you. Maybe you're a DFS player and you're seeing that a lot of players are questionable or out and you're going to go diving to the bargain barrel. Before you do that, Joe's here for you. So with that said, Joe Pizapia, time to attack some headlines here. A lot of players in, a lot of players out. So Mm -hmm. let's discuss. Yes, I don't want anyone to panic, but I understand if they are because the last 48 hours... We're lucky we showed up here today ourselves without a questionable tag. Everybody's questionable today, it feels like. So we are off to a rip-roaring, bizarre start. And we had a very quiet preseason, Matt Stryker, which meant only one thing. We were going to have a very loud first month of injuries, and that seems to be what is upon us right now. We've got a lot of guys out today already. Looks like Kamara's going to be out. We'll talk about him in a second. Michael Pittman is going to be out. Let's start with some other guys, though, from last week. We're going to be out for a significant time because we got to talk about all of them and the fantasy implications. Start with Dak Prescott, who's going to be out for several weeks, obviously, with that broken thumb. That's going to be an issue. It's going to downgrade the entire offense over there at Dallas. A lot of people wondering what to do with CeeDee Lamb. My suggestion to you is if you can get a DJ Moore for him or something like that, go ahead and do it because Cooper Rush is a significant downgrade. This is not like we're going to Teddy Bridgewater or an accomplished backup quarterback who's played in the NFL. Cooper Rush is a below average backup, and this is a huge downgrade in offense. We're going to talk about the implications of that Bengals game today a lot. Also talk about Eli Mitchell is going to be out for several months now. Jeffrey Wilson Jr., a player that I talked about on my shows as somebody to add before the season started just to give yourself a little bit of a cushion there. Well, he's the next man up. They did sign Marlon Mack as well, but I think it's Jeffrey Wilson's backfield to lose, which is great because if you picked him off the waiver wire this week, you got to go play him. Chances are in most leagues because you have that opportunity where he's going to get the bulk of the snaps. And you have Pittman out already. Uh, Paris Campbell is up. A lot of the other wide receivers you've never heard of are up. We'll see what happens to those guys today. And then Mike Williams bounce back, which, Matt, this is super important because Mike Williams is a player who did not have himself a good week one. There was overreaction. Uh, He was my must-start player of the week going into this week. He did not disappoint us. He had a huge game on Thursday night. And this is just a practice in patience, isn't it, Matt? That, look, it's only week one. Let's not freak out when we see things that don't happen that we thought were going to happen because if you draft good players with good process, they're going to be good. You just have to be a little patient and take a breath. And if you took a breath with Mike Williams and left him in, you did all right. You're starting off on the right foot this week. Yeah, that's why I opened the show by saying, don't panic, don't panic. I know everyone's out there refreshing their social media, which, by the way, we are at SportsGrid, at SportsGrid TV. Everyone's out there refreshing, trying to get that beat. And speaking of social media, we're going to refresh our social media because, mm-hmm. Joe, Ian Rappaport had a tweet out, has some information on the Tampa Bay Bucks, and I'd really love to get your analysis because I know a lot of people are looking at this team for some serious value But with some questions and concerns, I'd like to hear how you navigate it. So we're going to throw the tweet up. We'll let you analyze it and tell us where should we go from here. So there it is. This game is getting very tricky, I think, from a wagering perspective, from a fantasy perspective, very quickly. We know Godwin's going to be out already. Uh, The Bucks' Julio Jones landed on uh, on his knee last week. Uh, True game time decision now, they say. Russell Gage is dealing with a hamstring. Fournette with a hamstring. Uh, Tristan Wirfs, the offensive tackle, dealing with an abdomen injury. He should go. Uh, We think Gage is going to go, but all of a sudden now there's a lot of unknowns. And on the other side too, Kamara out for this game. So we welcome in our radio audience here to Fantasy Sports Today. It is Sunday morning. It's me, Joey P. Joe Pizapi with Matt Stryker breaking down the Bucks and New Orleans Saints game. And right now we are in a very precarious situation in that game. Alvin Kamara not going to play. That means Mark Ingram is going to get a lot of time. Uh, Not a lot of great health for Jameis Winston. (laughs) Basically, now the wide receiving core is down to Mike Evans and maybe Russell Gage for the Tampa Bay Bucs. I think Fournette will play. It seems like it's trending in that direction. But this has an enormous impact on the day, not just in the season-long fantasy leagues, but if you look at the landscape of DFS now with Pittman out, with Kamara out, with potentially losing guys like Julio Jones, just a lot of other players that are going to be out, Pittman especially too, That's a big one because a lot of people just assume, well, we'll just next man up in the wide receiver court, but it doesn't always happen that way. Maybe it becomes Naeem Hines who has a good game. Maybe it's just a lot of passing the ball to Jonathan Taylor. I think a lot of people are going to take some unnecessary cheap shots, if you will, today. And I don't know if that's the right way to go. I think for me, Matt, I want to invest in things I know and I feel good about, regardless of some of these massive discounts that are now going to be on the board. 
sure you might get one right, but I think if you get them wrong or if you have too many of them in a lineup, I think it could drag you down this week. I, I agree. And having it be the second week of the season for season long managers, you really have to be careful here because you need to think about before you go looking for that wide receiver three or four that you hope will play as a two or a one, think about the quarterback. Think about the offensive line. Think about the schemes. Think about the opponents. Take an issue like Tom Brady. He's less mobile than other quarterbacks. How will that affect pocket collapse? How will that affect schemes trying to get to the quarterback? And we'll dive into that a little deeper. But I think Joe is right. Instead of closing your eyes and throwing a dart, go with what you know. Start to take these receivers that you know, get to maybe have a little shorter routes or maybe get dump offs. Maybe look at some running backs who also catch the ball as well. Joe mentioned that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a Interesting strategy here, only in the second week. I just don't think that managers should panic. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Also, that TJ Watt injury, he's going to be out for several weeks too. That has a big impact on the, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense because he is the straw that serves the drink. His pass rush allows that defense to be good. It allows the interceptions for guys like Mika Fitzpatrick. It allows a lot of guys to do what they do well. We take him out of the equation. That's a huge downgrade overall to the defense and certainly from an IDP standpoint, too. We come back to the QBs and DFS right here on Sports Grid. Prove how much better they are than Texas. This actually matters. Winning this game 65 nothing matters because see they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52 to 10. Oh, you team is playing defense this year. I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP, but they're only allowing on average eight points per game. They held Kent State to just three points last week, Kevin. We talked about that total mm -hmm. on last week's show. College football today, only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Aaron Rodgers is playing with a ton of new wide receivers this season and doesn't seem all that happy about it. Today we hit the streets of New York to help and find out what's the best way to make new friends. What would you say is the best way to make new friends? Uh, not by talking to them on the street. So not, don't do this. Yeah. Go out and drink, go to the bar, you know, you have to. Maybe not like this. Give him money. Smile. That was nice. You want to give the smile again? The Sports Grid Network. Clemson has agreed to an extension, 10 years, $115 million for a college football coach. Clemson obviously been put on the map by Swinney. People have an overwhelming preference for mobile sports betting. Uh, you see adoption over 90% in many states that offer the mobile option. Well, Maryland hasn't had that, and it's been a bit of a sticking point. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid.
All right, welcome back in FST. Matt Stryker, Joe Pizzapia with you here. Of course, you want the edge? Get on the grid. Stay on the grid is the most important part. At SportsGrid, at SportsGrid TV. Those are social media handles. Anytime, any place, we've got your back. All right, Joe, this is what we do on this show. First hour is DFS lineups. We build them. We start with the quarterbacks. We break them down into tiers. We separate them, cash, GPP. This is the place to build your DFS lineup. So let's start. Let's start with the cash quarterbacks. How do you see it? Yeah, and look, some of these cash quarterbacks you can play in tournaments and vice versa. Well, I always want to say that up front so people understand that, you know, especially in a week today where all of a sudden you're taking some guys, some key guys out of equations, it does have a huge impact. And it starts to limit, I think, the quarterbacks that we really like and maybe chips a couple other guys off the board that we thought maybe we liked investments in and now we don't like it so much. And we can start at the top with Kyler Murray, who started to look much better, I think, as that game went on last week, but playing from behind, not the greatest scenario. He's at 8,500 on FanDuel, 75 on DK. I think he's a good investment as a bounce back because he's highly priced, though. I think he'll be lower rostered because of a lot of other options. In fact, I would rather go down a couple hundred dollars on both sites to Lamar Jackson, who's just 82 on FanDuel and 74 on DK. Uh, I like Lamar, especially if J.K. Dobbins is back and playing. I think that's good. A little bit of more balance to the offense, I think, is good for uh, Lamar Jackson actually to rush as well. Because when you can run the football effectively, that wears down the defense a little bit. And that's a good thing because we want Lamar Jackson out there running in space and picking up fantasy points. Now, you're going to see you're not going to have Cousins, Allen, Jalen Hurts. They're all on Monday night. So that's a fun slate to play. Unfortunately, they're all gone. So that's another thing because of the extra Monday night game, we're losing a whole other set of quarterbacks. And we had Herbert and Mahomes on Thursday night. So it's become a limited look. Lamar Jackson becomes even more intriguing when you factor all those things in. Now, for me, my favorite guy on this group, it's not Tom Brady. It's not Matthew Stafford, even though he's at a discount. It's not Russell Wilson. It's actually Joe Burrow, who put up a lot of fantasy points last week, despite making a lot of mistakes and throwing a lot of picks. I think against the Dallas Cowboys, when you take Dak Prescott out, and now you've downgraded significantly to Cooper Rush. There's a good chance that the Cowboys are going to have a lot of trouble moving the chains. If you have trouble moving the chains or you make turnovers, what does that do? It gives the Bengals more opportunities to score and puts the ball in Joe Burrow's hands more. I think you're going to see maybe three to five more offensive drives than you normally would in a game like this for the Bengals because of that fact. That doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. It's huge because every time you give a guy like Joe Burrow and this Bengals offense more shots, they can come up big. And I think for me, when I'm looking at the best return on investment in this grouping of quarterbacks, it's Joe Burrow at 7,966 over on DK, 79 on FanDuel. That's the way I see this board. Uh, Matt, when you see this board, is it Lamar? Is it Joe Burrow? Or perhaps we're looking for a bounce back out of a guy like Stafford or a guy like Russell Wilson this week. Well, hard to argue with your logic on Burrow, and the price point definitely makes it an option. My eyes immediately went to Russell Wilson. I'll be on him all year, actually. So as long as the price point is good and I can build a nice lineup around him, I will have lineups with Russell Wilson, uh, depending on matchups and by week, of course. But when you get to that top in Murray and Jackson, a lot of people that go into building their cash game DFS lineups are always looking for that style of quarterback. And Joe brings up a great point. If J.K. Dobbins is back, it's going to create just, just a little bit more opportunity for Lamar. And so at that price point, the extra money you save, you could use it to buy up somewhere else. But Joe's right. It's, it's a very volatile, volatile slate. And uh, when I see Tom Brady sitting right in the middle there, I, I want to have a lineup with Tom Brady in it, but it's just so uncertain, Joe. And uh, that's why your your analysis of Burrow is good, and that's why I think Wilson could be a good pivot. Let's go to the GPP quarterbacks now, and uh, Trey Lance is on the list. I know a lot of people are intrigued to hear what you have to say about his matchup today. Well, I think I'd say the same thing I said about Mike Williams earlier in the week is, look, trust the process. There's nothing you could take out of that game against the Bears in the rain. I mean, that was just a complete disaster. So now we get a better look against another weak opponent. He's at home. I think this is a good outing potentially. And I think Trey Lance becomes an interesting quarterback more on DraftKings where he's 5,700 than necessarily on FanDuel at 75. Uh, so I think you could still go in there. He brings a lot of rushing equity to the table. That's super important. Uh, Carson Wentz put up a great game. He's got a really good matchup this week too because – we all saw last week, you can put up points on that Detroit defense and Detroit's going to score as well. So that has the potential for getting close to the over in that game for sure. So Carson Wentz, believe it or not, is on the board. Again, 74 on FanDuel, 58 on DK. Derek Carr, always a good investment at 73 and 62. 
Uh, Winston, I'm out on. I'm in on Daniel Jones, but not on FanDuel at 71, on DraftKings at 5,100. He's a fascinating uh, guy today in tournaments because you don't have to pair him with anybody, right? You can run him out solo, but I prefer to run him with the cheap Saquon Barkley, which we're going to get to in a second. Remember last week when we said, look, he's cheap, he's chalk, he's Saquon Barkley, put him out there now when he's healthy. And if you did, well, you did okay last week, chances are. So I'm going to go back to that logic because on DraftKings especially, he hasn't gone up to the top of the board yet. On FanDuel, they've adjusted. They have not corrected enough on DraftKings. So I think a fascinating little skinny stack, if you will, is going with Daniel Jones, who does have some low-key rushing equity in him. He does use his legs all right. Pair him with Saquon Barkley. If you want to put Shepard in there instead, that's okay too. I do think Shepard will be uh, a guy you will see targeted a lot in this game as well. And um, then you got Trevor Lawrence, Matt Ryan, who I'm off of now this week, and Jared Goff, who is respectable. But once again, we're looking for bigger boom potential here. So to me, Daniel Jones is that cost-effective guy at 5,100, the cheapest guy of all of this lot over on DraftKings. I think he brings a lot of appeal. Trey Lance brings some appeal too with his legs. Carr, Wentz, those are guys I think you can roll with in this range. But going back to what you said about Tom Brady too, I just want to bring that up again because he has struggled at times against the New Orleans Saints. They've had good game plans for him. And this is going to be a fascinating matchup. We know Mike Evans struggles against Marshawn Lattimore, typically when you look at those numbers, and now you're taking away potentially Julio Jones. This is a tough matchup now for Brady. Uh, I would also say that uh, I'm with you on Russell Wilson. I do think this is kind of a relax, get the emotions out from last week and go out there and play. It's a cookie matchup. They should roll or ride if you're Russell Wilson, so to speak. But Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about me taking a shot on Daniel Jones this week? Am I crazy after week one, or do you think there's something to this? I, I, I'll never say you're crazy, ever. I mean, you, you've proven yourself. But I know there are a lot of people out there that are going to turn their head like a dog that hears a sound in the distance say, Daniel Jones, come on. But we can come back here next week when he has a good game and you can remind everyone of the price point on DK <laughs> and the reasoning that you gave, which is the most important thing. A lot of analysts come out and they tell you, tell you, tell you, they don't give you any reason. At least Joe does. Mm. Um, for me, it's Trey Lance, Wentz, and Carr at the top here just because of the the ability that each bring individually. I think that Lance brings a great wrinkle in a game. And if you're doing DFS, that's the kind of player you want for those those unknowns, those extras. Wentz has shown what, what I thought going into the season. This is going to be a very viable team. And when the matchups are right, Wentz is going to be a definite, definite play. And I just like Derek Carr. He showed you what he could do last season. I like the big arm. I like the big play. When I'm in these kind of uh, GPP DFS lineups, I'm always looking for something like that. And last but not least, Jared Goff, uh, you said it. And as the season rolls on, more people are going to be saying it. There are points to be had there. And I think if you can find that at 6,700 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DraftKings, that's definitely the way to go, Joe. But um, with the Daniel Jones thing, I think more people are going to be coming around to your school of thought in the coming weeks, which I'm sure you're used to in this industry. Well, look, I, I think you want to be, I always say what, respectively different a little bit. Like you, you want to not just be different for the sake of being different. But if you look at it last week, he had six rushes for 25 yards. So he brings you a little extra points there. You know, he can run. That's a good thing. Um, you know, there's a, a decent enough matchup here for Daniel Jones, but it's the price on DraftKings where, uh, again, I don't have to tie him into a receiver. Now, look, I, I still like Joe Burrow the best here in Lamar Jackson. If I'm going to invest in a quarterback, that's where I want to invest. But if I want to have an alternate kind of feel, if you have Daniel Jones in a DK lineup, you can get Devontae Adams and Jamar Chase in that lineup very easily. You could pivot to Jonathan Taylor, who's probably going to be very highly owned. And once again, you don't have to necessarily search for that other wide receiver and figure out who's right because chances are what you want to do is just put Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley and that becomes on DraftKings today a very cost-effective duo it allows you to do a lot of other things and spend that money elsewhere which is a really nice thing we come back we're going to take a look at the running backs here because well there's a lot of questions so hopefully we have a few answers for you but some things look better than others we'll tell you which they are we come back right here on Fantasy Sports Today. The level of suckness goes here, Scott, on the suckness scale. Um, Hawaii is not going to suck as bad as Duquesne is. I love my Canes, and they hate me in Tallahassee, obviously. 
But I wanted to say that last night was the first time in 20 years that I bet on Florida State in a football game. I won't even let my kid go look at the school. In-game live all access only on SportsGrid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. They scored seven points in a football game <laughs> and did not score a touchdown. Let's think about that. You're not good at math. I'll do the math for you. They're laying things off, but they're doing something wrong with this group or that group or whatever. I, I, Within one to two years, absolutely. And it could involve a referee of a major professional sport. There's no debate in my mind that that's possible. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College National football today. Alabama in winning SEC championships. It's the island of misfit tour. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. When this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash. In-game, live, take all the points. access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In-game, live, prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. All right, welcome back in FST Fantasy Sports Today. Matt Stryker and Joe Pizzatia with you. Again, a reminder, at SportsGrid, at SportsGrid TV. Those are the social media handles. You're going to be refreshing all day long. We have news coming out of Baltimore's backfield. Will Dobbins play? No, Dobbins won't play. Oh, what do I do now? I just heard that he was going to play. Keep refreshing and make sure that you know because – the age of information, being ignorant is a choice. With that said, Joe, let's look at the DFS running backs here because immediately Jonathan Taylor is going to jump out to everyone. A lot of people think that with the uh, injury to Pittman or the questionable status that Taylor is going to be the guy to rush for 360 yards and three touchdowns. If that's the case, he's priced accordingly. But what do you say? Well, he is. And luckily you're in a week where all of a sudden we have all these other pieces. We have, you know, cheap Daryl Henderson, cheap uh jeffrey wilson jr you have ways to make him work in lineup so it's okay to go jonathan taylor is it more of a cash game play probably because it's going to suck up a lot of your other sure. um budget to go all the way to the top of the board um you look how expensive he is he's ten thousand on FanDuel, 9900 on dk yeah i get it i also get having one jonathan taylor lineup that you throw in a tournament just to see if he has that transcendent day and you can build enough around it it means you're gonna have to look at wide receivers too like the, the greg dorches of the world and, you know, who's really cheap on DK at 35, who we'll touch on later, and some other guys that might be very cheap this week. And you have to kind of hit on one or two of those players or a tight end in order to make Jonathan Taylor work this week. That being said, it seems like a really heavy Jonathan Taylor week, and it might be worth at least trying one lineup of that. Uh, Christian McCaffrey at 9K, 8,900. We kind of faded away from him last week. I'm kind of in the same vein because, again, Saquon Barkley is cheaper. 8,800, you save 200 on FanDuel. But look at that price on DK, 7,300. 7,300, 
if you want to pivot away from Taylor and McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley looked as good as any running back in the league that I've seen in years last week. I mean, he was just unbelievable. Hopefully it'll last. Hopefully the health holds out. But in the meantime, I think we have to keep investing. And you've seen that FanDuel's caught up. DraftKings hasn't. So there's a huge DraftKings play. Is he going to be super chalky? Is he going to be highly rostered? Yes. Is it going to be like 25, 30% probably? So what? <laughs> I want the points. I want that investment. Stop trying to be different. Just be right. Saquon again. Uh, Nick Chubb's probably going to get used a lot, but I think I prefer Kareem Hunt this week in terms of the cost because he gets a little bit more from the reception side. Uh, Joe Mixon, this is a good investment too. If you don't want to go to the top of the board for Taylor on FanDuel, you don't want to go to the top of the board for guys like McCaffrey or CMC, Joe Mixon at 8300 is a nice pivot. He's about seven to $500 cheaper, but he also brings a ton of equity in this game. Rushing equity, touchdown equity in a game I mentioned earlier. I just think the Bengals are going to have the ball a ton. It's hard to think they don't have a lead at some point in this game. And if they do, you get a lot of Joe Mixon in this game. Uh, DeAndre Swift, because of the ankle, because maybe he's going to get limited just a little bit, probably will fade away from him. It makes him a fascinating investment in tournaments, though, because he's still cheap and because he gives you what he does, which is an incredible talent. Does he need to touch the ball 20 times to have a great game? No. But if he gets limited in this game and he misses those touchdowns like he did last week to Jamal Williams, that could become an issue. That's why I think this week you fade him a little bit. If you want to do one lineup with him, that's okay. But I would do it on DK where he's 6,700. You could do it on FanDuel at 78, but I think James Conner at 76 and 6,900 is kind of equally in that plane. Leonard Fournette is going to play this week, just so everybody knows. Um, so that seems like that's going in the right direction at least. But right now, Joe Mixon, I think you look at this board, you look at Barkley. Those are the two best return on investments this week at that position. If you want to put two of them together, that's fine. But then you have to downgrade quite a bit at the wide receiver range. You have to look for more of those possession guys. Maybe you're looking uh, at guys like Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, Jerry Judy, guys of that nature, which is fine. But once again, this is a tricky situation this week because of some of the injuries and because the chasm between these guys at the top and the guys that are going to be at the bottom and very cheap this week who are going to get a fair amount of run as well, Matt. Look at you, chasm. Nicely done. Big words. Um, Big words. I, I thank you, by the way, for that toilet like, paper you sent me with the word of the day. It's really paying <laughs> off. That wasn't why I sent it to you. Um, at the bottom of the list, <laughs> I like uh, Fournette just because of the conversation we were having with Brady having less and less options here, and he's not the most mobile quarterback. But I do think the tight end play will come in to a factor in that game. We could talk about that later on. But Fournette would be a nice play. And I'm with you on Barkley, man. And I was at the beginning of the season. You and I have had this conversation. And again, it's going to be one of those things where – by week five, people were like, yeah, 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 I was in on him too. No, no, you weren't. Joe was in on him before anyone. And it's it's a nice price point. I think that's super important because you're going to look at Jonathan Taylor and say, oh, yeah, yeah, on FanDuel, look at that number. What's left for me to do from there? So I think Joe brings up a really good point about being economical and yet still going out there and getting those points. So yeah, if it's chalk and that's how you want to go, then Taylor's the play. But to Joe's point, you could pivot to the Barclays of the world and a few others, especially that Joe Mixon play. Let's get into the second tier here because I always find this is what's going to make or break people's lineup. Uh, we start with Patterson at the top, and that's actually a good place to start because I have a few leagues where Patterson is rostered and his expected point total is actually more than several other players whom I was thinking of starting. So let's start with Patterson. Do you think there's a play there given his matchup? And if not, where would we pivot? Look, it's hard to argue with the volume that Patterson got last week, and he's probably going to get it again. I don't love the matchup against the Rams, so that's my only concern here is I don't want to go chasing that. Uh, it's 6K on DraftKings. I like it a little bit more than I do at 75, but you can make this investment. I, I can't say you can't right now. In season long, you're running out there in leagues as well, but it's not the best potential scenario. However, volume is king, and right now Patterson's getting the volume, so that's fine. Antonio Gibson's also getting that volume in this game against Detroit. I like this investment a little bit more. It's 7,462 on DK, 74 on FanDuel. That makes a little bit of sense to me. Javante Williams, who is going to continue to work in the passing game, also at 7,300 on FanDuel, 65 on DK. You can do some lineups with Gibson and Williams to kind of swap them in and out. I would fade away from Najee Harris this week because of the foot injury against the Patriots. I know he's playing it's just a huge question mark. What if he re-injures it? What if something's happening? What if he's playing, but he's more limited and he's there as a decoy? It's too many if, if, if. I don't like that when I'm investing in DFS. To me, it's a recipe for disaster. Alvin Kamara, out. Scratch him off the board. People will pivot to Ingram. He's not 100% healthy either. He's also as old as Matt and myself, and that's not a good thing for a running back. I could trust you. Uh, Kareem Hunt, 
7K at FanDuel, 66 on DK. Love this investment. He was a top five RB in half PPR scoring last week. Okay, top five. He is priced at 7K on FanDuel. It's one of the best returns on investment on the board. He gets work in the red zone. He gets work in the passing game. He gets carries. He gets everything. He gets points. Make this investment. James Robinson at 6,800 at 56 over on DK and Josh Jacobs should get a fair amount of work at 6,658 should be better than last week. But to me, it's clear it's Kareem Hunt, Gibson Williams. Those are my three, Matt. What do you think of those three guys this week? Who's your favorite perhaps of that trio? Well, I'm a commander fan, so I'm going to go to Gibson, but that's my (laughs) fandom here. Uh, I like the points that you make. I really do. And each week that we sit here, you know, I always take all these notes and then when I build my lineups, I'm always, you're always on my shoulder. And I think it's important because it's the logic that you use. So uh, when you give me those options, I mean, I'm going to lean to Gibson just because of the fact that I don't think a lot of people realize what can happen over there. And again, in a couple of weeks, people are going to come back and say, yeah, 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 yeah. But here we are week two, trying to build some DFS uh, wallet height so we can play with their money throughout the rest of the season. Let's look at the flex here. A uh, lot of names here. Uh, you already mentioned Jeff Wilson and, and how Daryl Henderson could be a play as well. How do you sit on Rashad Penny? And does he want you to go? Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, when I'm on your shoulder, am I in the devil costume or the angel costume? I don't know. Or do you get one of each? You get like Devil yes, Joe and Angel Joe. You hop around yeah, all right. back and forth. I hop around. I get around. Yes. Me and Tupac, we get around. Uh, all right, let's go to uh, Rashad Penny. Um, you know, because the game script, you would imagine they're going to be behind potentially in this game. And the San Fran run defense is very good. It's not super appealing to me. Uh, that being said, I would not be surprised if this game was maybe more competitive. Like last week's Seahawks game against the Broncos was more competitive than I think people realize. Uh, they are missing Jamal Adams for the year, though. So now we take the best player on that defense out. It would seem that guys like Ayuk, guys like um, potentially Debo Samuel are going to have a better day, uh, in which case you would imagine that Seattle is probably coming from behind. And that's not great, even though they are a run first team for Rashad Penny. Jeff Wilson, on the other hand, look, is Jeff Wilson going to carry the ball 25 times? Probably not. Is he going to carry it 15 and maybe have a touchdown? Probably. And at 6,300 on FanDuel and at 5,100 on DK, that's just a good investment. Like that's just an investment you should make every day. Uh, Daryl Henderson, uh, twenty at sixty two hundred on Fanduel, fifty seven on DK. If the volume holds week over week, this is an incredible return on investment. In fact, you could go with Wilson and Henderson and just pay up for Lamar Jackson, pay up for Devonte Adams, pay up at tight end, and make that all work by just downgrading to those RBs with the workload and the touchdown equity they bring in their respective offenses that are pretty good. Harris Edmonds. Travis Etienne, who should have had more touchdowns last week, but did not. I think it fade away from most of these guys. Etienne has a little bit more appeal at 5,600 because of the the ability to catch the football. Um, But to me, this is a little trickier. In fact, if you have James Robinson, who we mentioned earlier at 6,800, he's an interesting fan duel play because I think he brings a little more touchdown equity than Travis Etienne does. So you're paying an extra thousand, but you're getting that touchdown equity. But for me, when I'm looking at this list this week, um, it's Jeffrey Wilson, it's Darrell Henderson. Those are the two guys I think have the most appeal and return on investment quality. Yep. For me, I'm looking at Chase Edmonds and I'm going to keep my eye on him as the season goes along. But looking at the price point between Edmonds and, and Jeff Wilson, especially on FanDuel, it, it almost makes you say, and even worse on drafting, it almost makes you flip a coin. If I'm going to flip a coin between those two, I, I think I want the coin to land on Wilson but it all depends on how I want to build my lineups, especially on FanDuel. Yeah, look, running back, you have options. We showed you how to pay up to the top of the board. We showed you where the value is at the middle. We gave you the names, and we gave you these guys who are cheaper as well. And if you want to put one of these guys in the flex, that's perfectly fine too. Remember, especially on FanDuel, you're looking for the touchdowns. It's half PPR. The touchdowns become super important. Wilson's one of those guys that I'd be very surprised if he didn't come away with one score this week. We come back for a hard look at the wide receivers right here on Fantasy Sports Today. Ten and a half, heavily, heavily juiced to the over. But clearly it meant that over under 11 and a half would have been heavily juiced to the under. 
it's hard to find over or what perceived value would be, right? Because typically, say a touchdown prop, I want to make sure I get plus money. Let me see Travis, Kel- Travis Kelsey's a minus 145, and for good reason. He's going to probably get 10 plus targets in this game. The early line, only on Sports Grid. American at Georgia, man. Now he's done. Anyway, I like where you're going, Brancy. I love those cats. <laughs> Jaguars plus four and a half. Put it in. I endorse it. Robert Sala, you suck. Your team sucks. J E T S just end the season. Y'all need to come better. You know what? I'm giving the big dummy award to Robert Sala. Take my receipt, Robert. I want my money back. In game live all access only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game practice. time decisions. But this is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live oh, prime yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. I'm slightly conflicted is because I feel like I love so much on the board, but do I love one thing more than another? Can I call one thing my favorite bet or my best bet? We'll find out. And there's just overall chaos is what it looks like with this offense. On fourth down, Jacoby Myers and Davian Harris running into each other, but the Patriots getting bailed out by a PI down the field. The morning after only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in. This is FSE Fantasy Sports Today. My name is Matt Streger. His name is Joe Pizzapia. Yep, you heard it right. The same Joe Pizzapia that's authored the Black Book series. It's out there right now. Just a quick internet search. And I promise you, you will be better at every single league you ever enter, every DFS lineup you ever put in. Joe Pizzapia is a national treasure and must be protected. At all costs. And with that said, we build our DFS lineups further. We talked about quarterback. We talked about all the running backs. Let's go to the wide receivers and the tight ends now. Joe, no one else in the world can speak to this topic like you. Floor is yours, pal. Can I add that to my Twitter handle? National Treasure, says Matt Stryker. I'm going to right after the show. It's going to be there. Let's go, baby. Boy, oh boy. I mean, it's just, you're setting me up for the rest of the day with my kids. You realize that everything's downhill when you say these nice things. It's all just... You know, daddy, daddy, I need this, daddy, I did. It's good. It's humbling. Yeah, I try. All right, let's uh, let's get to the wide receivers. Let's start with Cooper Cup at the top, ninety seven hundred over on Fanduel, ninety nine hundred on DK. That boy expensive, and there's no Justin Jefferson to pay up for this week. And uh, look, you can go up to the top of the board at Cooper Cup. I'm not saying it's going to be wrong. I'm just saying if you can give me a thousand dollar discount on Cooper Cup on Fanduel to Devontae Adams, I'm going to take it. Uh, same thing over on DraftKings. I mean, there. what separates Devontae Adams and Cooper Cup at this point? To me, not a whole lot, except the price on these guys. So if you're going to give me a $1,000 discount roughly or more on DraftKings especially, I mean, just, just take it. 1300 difference between these two players. So give me Adams over Cooper Cup. It's a no-brainer. Um, I can't see one of them having – I can't see Cooper Cup having a game that's 
so much better potentially than Devontae Adams for that price. It just doesn't fit for me. So I'm out on Cooper Cup this week. Give me Adams. I'm also in on Jamar Chase. And here's the reason why. I think this is a week where you try to get that duo together if you can, because I think they're both in a phenomenal situation. Look, when you have Trayvon Diggs, who's a very good corner, but a corner that likes to take shots sometimes, sometimes he makes big mistakes, and you can't make mistakes with Jamar Chase. That dude's going to make you pay. And I think this is a very dangerous matchup for Diggs because Chase is that dude. Like, he is that guy. And I think when you put that guy in Trayvon Diggs, and he's going to want to mess around with him. He's going to want to take some shots, try to pick a ball off. Jamar Chase is going to make him look silly at least one time. There's some big play potential in here. And again, not knocking digs. He's a great corner, but he does play fast and loose, and that could be a dangerous game to play with Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. Uh, Mike Evans, hard pass against Lattimore. Not at this price. Tyreek Hill in play. Got a lot of targets last week, but the irony is he got a lot of targets, but Waddle got the touchdown. I thought that was supposed to be the opposite. It was supposed to be Jalen Waddle getting all of the targets, and it was supposed to be Tyreek Hill scoring touchdowns and making big plays. Who knew? Uh, maybe that'll reverse this week. I don't know, but take this into account. There are a lot of injuries to the secondary Baltimore. So what was looking like a tough matchup is a little softer here. Marlon Humphrey's not hundred percent. A couple other injuries going on there to me. I think Hill and Waddle are both very much in play this week, uh, but not as much as chase and Adams for the price. Debo Samuel has some appeal at eight K at 7,800 on DK. Also some appeal. I mentioned the injury to Jamar, uh, Jamal Adams, excuse me. That's going to be a huge one for that secondary uh, for Seattle. Pittman is now out, so he can cross him off that high rung list. And Marquise Hollywood Brown at 7,462. I think that's more of a trap. If I'm going to be in that range at 74, I'm going to go down even further and look for some other guys. But to me, it's Chase, it's Adams, fade the very top at Cook. And maybe you have a Tyreek Hill or uh, Debo Samuel exposure. But look, when you don't have Evans on the board, we don't have Justin Jefferson on the board, you're taking some of these big receivers out. Mike Williams not on the board, right? Some other guys in some of these other games that are going to be playing, no A.J. Brown, right? No Stephon Diggs. Talking about those guys on Monday night. This becomes a very tunnel vision wide receiver group. So just like the RBs, be very careful here what you do. Invest in what you know. And I know Jamar Chase and I know Devontae Adams are going to return their investment, even though it's premium. It's a solid and sound strategy. I'd expect nothing less from you. And uh, I will echo the sentiments because if I were building a lineup based off of just this, it would involve Adams and Chase. And I would definitely want to line up with Hill just because of the fact that he has that that long ball threat. It's always uh, intriguing. All right, let's move to the second tier of wide receivers. And I'm going to say it every week. This is where we make our money here. We're talking about guys like McLaurin and Johnson and Higgins and Amon Ross St. Brown. So how should we continue to build a lineup with the second tier of receivers, Joe? Yeah, the second tier is a little tricky. Uh, we'll start with Terry McLaurin at 7,366 on DraftKings. Um, again, didn't do a whole lot last week. A lot of Curtis Samuel. A lot of people will be chasing that. I might chase it as a flex spot in a couple leagues. I'd rather go to Jalen Waddle at 7,200 on FanDuel and 64 at DK. I think he's a much better investment, especially with those injuries I mentioned before about the Baltimore Ravens secondary. Uh, T. Higgins has been dealing with a concussion all week. He's at 7K and 59 on DK. Um, on the FanDuel side, it's 7,000. Like, it's just a tough investment dealing with that concussion, having Chase, having Mixon. Like, you got to have all these guys. Look, it could be a two-touchdown game, for all we know, from T. Higgins. But is that something we can count on? I don't think the answer is yes to that. So I would kind of fade away from that. Now, Michael Thomas did have a two-touchdown game last week. I don't know if that's something we could chase, but they're going to have to really pressure on him, especially with Kamara out. I think you're going to see Michael Thomas force-fed the ball a little bit. Uh, so he becomes a more interesting play at that same price as Higgins at 7K over on FanDuel, 58 on DK. So Higgins and Thomas being the same price, I'll take Michael Thomas, but I'll tell you what, I'll take Amon Ross St. Brown over both of them because this dude has just been absolutely spectacular. I mean, from his last year finish to the – Week one, what he picked up where right where he left off. The guy's getting targets. He's catching them. He's making the most of the opportunities. He has touchdown upside. He has all those things that you want in a wide receiver, including that volume. That volume is heavy. It is strong, especially if you have DeAndre Swift in this passing game limited. That's even more potentially for Amon Ross St. Brown today. Look for a bounce back of Cortland Sutton. He is a fascinating tournament play today. A lot of people have already soured, just like they soured after one week of Mike Williams. I've been a Judy guy, but I think people have soured way too much on Cortland Sutton too soon. So it's 6,100 on DK. I would invest in that as a bounce back game for sure today, especially if you want to pair him with Russell Wilson. I think that's a perfectly good uh, pairing. And DK Metcalf, you know, it's kind of tough here. You know, you can get 10 targets and end up catching seven balls for 40 yards. And that's just not very exciting. Like, I feel like 
the new threshold or benchmark for DK Metcalf is just not a very appealing one from an investment standpoint. So give me Sutton, give me Amon Ross St. Brown, give me Michael Thomas, give me Waddle. To me, those are the few guys in this range that I have expectations for this week. But Matt, who do you have expectations for in this group? So I'm all over Amon Ross St. Brown, the better of the St. Brown brothers for all the reasons (laughs) that you listed, but especially would like to underline and put in bold the fact that if Swift is limited and he is a good pass catching back, the next place you're going to go for those opportunities would hopefully go to Amon Ross St. Brown. I also like Terry McLaurin. I do. And I love the fact that everyone has soured on that Washington team, or at least they were before the season started. I do think there's a lot of weapons here. And I think that this team will continue to be viable, especially with the fact that no one's looking at them. They're a non-public team. And I like that, especially when building certain lineups in certain tournaments. Let's go to the third tier of receivers. I think Christian Kirk Mm. is fascinating. Actually, last night, I kind of moved him out of my lineup. Still have some time to put him back in, but the matchup was what concerned me. Jerry Judy is in my lineup. But let's talk about the rest of these third tier receivers. I'd like to know your thoughts on guys like Robbie Anderson and on Curtis Samuel. People are saying, oh, where'd this come from? Where'd this come from? Joe, you could speak better to this, but I recall that Samuel played this way in college. Where do you go? Ohio State, maybe? So it's not too much of a surprise but how are you leaning here well look let's start with christian kirk who we talked about last week was going to be a big heavy volume guy and he was right so i go right back to that well 57 on dk especially in the full ppr love it there jerry judy at 63 on fanduel 56 on dk also very strong investment dj moore is kind of the cheaper version this week of Cortland sutton didn't do anything week Mm -hmm. one so people have soured already so if you want to go in there you can but keep in mind Talked about Robbie Anderson at 5,953 over on DraftKings, 59 on FanDuel. Robbie Anderson does fit the skill set of Baker Mayfield, or at least the tendencies of Baker Mayfield. Because there's one thing about Baker we all know is that he likes to take shots downfield, sometimes irresponsible shots downfield. Well, that fits Robbie Anderson's build. Now, Robbie Anderson has been known as that big play wide receiver, right? Last week, got all the yards and a touchdown in that one big play. And people say, well, you can't trust that. You can't chase that. Normally, they'd be right. Except Baker Mayfield, that's kind of his MO. So (laughs) that kind of matches up in a very interesting way. And I think because of that becomes an unknown for me, I kind of want to wait and see another week of this offense and what it looks like before I go investing in it. So as fascinating as the DJ Moore week two bounce back is, or maybe what we saw at a week one of Robbie Anderson, I think I'm going to stay away from both of those things this week and just wait and see how they play out a little bit more before I start making my DFS investments, especially because I can get Judy and Christian Kirk for somewhere in that same neighborhood. Or I could pivot down to Curtis Samuel at 5,700, who touched the ball a fair amount last week, had touchdown equity, 4,600 on DK. What a great lineup builder he is. 4,600, you know he's going to touch the ball. That's huge. It might be at the expense of Terry McLaurin again. Jahan Dotson did get some work there as well. But uh, DJ Chark, Julio Jones looking like a game time decision. You can't really invest in him if that's the case. And Elijah Moore is fascinating. He needs that one big play. He didn't get it last week. Maybe he gets it last this week, but I don't want to chase it. But Kirk, Judy, to me, those are the two guys in this grouping. And Curtis Samuel, I would actually invest in. A few other names that you should know. Um, Drake London at 5,600, getting a lot of volume. Hunter Renfro, 5,600, same guy on DraftKings. Getting a lot of volume, I think, potentially in this game with this matchup slot corner there is not good for for the uh, Arizona Cardinals. They're going to exploit that matchup, and Hunter Renfro is going to benefit from it. I know if you don't want to go off to Adams and you want to pivot down, Hunter Renfro is that guy. Dotson's just 5,500, but he's got to score that touchdown. And then Greg Dortch, 5,500 on FanDuel, just 3,500 on DK. He got a lot of targets last week. Rondell Moore is out again. A.J. Green is dust. I think at this point you could look at Dorch as a viable other option in that Arizona passing game, Matt. Um, I like Hunter Renfro, and I'm going to like him also all season. I think he is just the, the guy that's going to clean up all the spill off that we're going to see over there. <laughs> and I think priced at that price was a 5,500, 5,600. You can really, really build a great lineup with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move to the tight ends here. And uh, not on this list is Tyler Higby, though I have seen his name bandied about. Uh, I like Hayden Hurst. A friend of mine had a baby and named it Hayden, so that has part of it to do with it. But uh, on this tight end list, who stands out to you as the best value? Well, Hurst does, especially, you know, as we've waited to see the health of T. Higgins this week. So if T. Higgins is limited at all, I mean, it looks like he's going to play at this point. We haven't heard otherwise. But if he's limited, then Hurst becomes interesting. And, And let's not forget, I mean, we had 
scenarios last year where the Bengals tight end CJ Uzamo had not one, but two tight end number one overall games. So it's something this offense can produce, even though they have all these other wide receivers. Um, this could be a scenario where you can, you're playing for the touchdown. If Hurst just has that touchdown, it's a great value at 5,300 on FanDuel. It's a little sketchy to me at 36 on DK. You have nothing to lose. I mean, legit nothing to lose. If he has a couple catches, he could even return this value here a little bit. He doesn't even need the touchdown, but it's about the volume. Maybe you get the extra shots. Maybe that becomes something. Uh, Zach Ertz at 5,200 on FanDuel, I think is more appealing than Hurst at 5,300 especially you saw Zach Ertz toward the end of that game start to work a little more, but I'm going to fade down. I'm going to look for Hurst. I'm going to look for Ertz. We already had Kelsey on the Thursday night slate, so he's out. Uh, Waller at 6,800 on FanDuel is a decent investment, decent look for a potential touchdown. Pitt certainly needs a bounce back. I think people will be off him this week, but once again, you know, can we invest in the Falcons against the Rams and that pass rush with Marcus Mariota quarterback and that bad offensive line? Uh, that's dicey to me. So, Fade down, Hurst, Ertz, and maybe even David Njoku on DK as well. I think he might be slated for more targets than people realize in that offense. So we're going to hit a quick break. When we return, we're going to take a quick look at the defenses and close out uh, our first hour of the program on DFS and then turn the page to season long. But stick around. we got a little D to talk about. We return right here on Fantasy Sports Today on Sports Grid. racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts gabe marinci and cam stewart will get you ready for game time everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Liu, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on SiriusXM Sports Grid Channel 159. Great time to get in on Chargers futures, just as an example, because we are going to see some huge, huge swings in those markets, uh, like way bigger than I think we've ever seen in the past. You look at lower salary running backs on FanDuel. They tend to pay off even when they're chalky. Uh, their hit rate is very good. If you look at value, they're good, but also just like raw points, lower salaried backs the public has confidence in tend to do very well. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. Sports professor Rick Haro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, notwithstanding Dak Prescott's debilitating injury and Tom Brady's timelessness, the NFL continues to move along. Usually, the average about $17 million for a Sunday afternoon game. The number's well over 20 to $25 million for the Cowboys-Buccaneers. The repeat, last year in Tampa, this year in Dallas. Last year, a thriller. This year, a dud. Doesn't really matter. The Bills and the Rams, records. Other Week 1 games, records. And remember, 20, 48 of the 50 top shows last year were NFL games. This is no exception. Monetizing hope means everybody has a chance to win the Super Bowl in their own minds week one, maybe even to week two or three. They continue to generate what might be a 16 to $18 billion business.
All right, welcome back, FST. We're closing out the first hour, but don't you worry, still a whole other hour of myself and the legend Joe Pizzapia to come. But in the remaining time that we have, let's look at the defenses, Joe. We build some pretty good DFS lineups. Let's cap it off now. How are we looking at the D? Well, we're looking at the D this way this week because uh, Pittsburgh Seahawks is at the top of the board on FanDuel 5,000, yet on DraftKings only 2,800. I don't understand this. I don't know why these two can't get along and get on the same pricing structure, but clearly a uh, big divide here. I hate them at the top of the board, <laughs> 5K, but they're intriguing on DK at 2,800. But why I mentioned earlier at the top of the show, when you take TJ Watt out, you're taking out sacks, the sacks and the pressure into that backfield, pressure on the quarterback, learns you know pretends itself to mistakes by the quarterback which means less interceptions potentially so i downgrade this defense the 49ers defense though i would pay up for at 49 that's fair same with the broncos at 48 uh they're both expensive on dk at 39 and 38 also uh, the rams defense at 4600 have a really good matchup against a terrible offensive line i expect turnovers in that game i expect sacks in that game especially from aaron donald at least one uh and then you have the baltimore ravens who secondary in question now, the health, that becomes a fade. The Bucks defense with Kamara out now becomes even more intriguing. New Orleans on the other side intriguing as well with all of these injuries to the Tampa Bay offense. It looks like both these teams are the walking wounded coming into this game. 4,200 for the Bucks on FanDuel, 33 on DK. But my favorite defense remains $2,200 on DraftKings this week, the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are a pretty good defensive unit. They didn't play great last week, but I think... They will play better this week. And I think that once again, we're looking at an opportunity against Cooper Rush to make mistakes. There's turnovers potential here. There's sack potential. There's a lot to like here with the Cincinnati Bengals. So to me, pay down for the Bengals or pay up for the Niners and Broncos. I think those are two routes that make a lot of sense this week. What makes a lot of sense is tuning in for hour two of the show. You know why? Because it's season long. All of your starts and sit questions, who's in, who's out. And let me tell you, it is a laundry list this week. Plus the important questions and some buy sell as well. We're going to talk all of it in hour two of Fantasy Sports today, right here on Sports Grid.